that a sounder thingy? Hello? Is that the camera? Alright, folks. Um, so today is. Wait, that is not very big. <laughs> it's a very
So they say that one particular thing, then you say that same thing back, and then they say that you say that, right? And it's an interesting um, fight for us to engage in because the result will always be the same because we've said the same things we said last time. So, you know, it seems a little bit crazy to expect that somehow things are going to be different, right? Well, what has to happen in order for that circle, that chain of fight to stop? All right, so maybe for, maybe for both parties to somehow get the thing they want, um, or could one party change their language maybe, not say things in a way that is as aggressive? Could, right? So sometimes, sometimes the problem isn't that they're asking you something that is so offensive, it's that somehow the way it was said is very upsetting, right? So thinking about how the next time you're about to you know, get into that same fight again, thinking about how you might change your language or change your behavior in order to um, try something new and get a different result. All right, and then tonight, um, the homework is based off the assignment we do in class today. Most people, most years in the past, have been able to finish both the activity and most, if not all, of those questions. So this may be homework depending on your pace and focus today. Um, all right, so we are going to move on to our noties because I've got so many people waiting and they're looking anxious and upset. Um, and uh, as always, where can this be found? Uh, on the website or more locally, right? Someone right next door, right? So Wait. someone right in the room. All right, you got five seconds and then we're going. I got, two, I got too many people waiting. You're not more important than 28 other people. Seven, eight, Wait, say five and a half. Wait, did you skip? No. I did, I did all fingers. And it's on the board, too. Okay. And I can, we can always go back to it again. All right. All right, so we're on our notes side now. Um, and um, first thing we're going to talk about is survival versus advanced living. Um, last week, we talked a little bit about what makes humans different than other animals. Um, what, what are some differences between humans and other animals? Um, do other animals use vocalizations to communicate? Yeah. Yeah, so they do technically talk, yeah. Oh. Got nothing? All right, Brianna, go ahead. Oh, I wasn't raising my hand. Oh, I thought you made like a song. All right. Please. We're a lot more advanced with technology. All right, for one thing, we can produce machines that do stuff for us, right? Um, what about our response to stimulus? What is something that humans have that most animals do not? Right, like something happens near an animal, like a loud noise, or something bumps up against them. What is something humans have the ability to do that most animals do not? Yeah. All right, so most animals will react, right? Like something, something they hear a loud sound, they like jump or scream, or if something upsets them, they attack it or run away from it. Um, do humans have a different option? All right, so we can think about stuff, right? We don't react on impulse, right? So we have the ability to control ourselves. And that's something other animals do not have, um, is this ability to say, I don't, even though I really want this thing to happen, I'm just going to like sit and do this other thing. Um, all right, so some of do these two things. Um, all right, now survival living is an organism just meeting its most basic needs for um, staying alive. And we've talked a little about homeostasis last week. Um, and Snyder, if you could grab the cup and pull a name. Let me take the whole cup. All right. What, we're, what Snyder's going to do is ask the person to tell us what I've done with homeostasis here. It's a trick I did last week, and I want to make sure we're savvy with it by the end of the year. All right. So Kaylani's going to tell us what have I done with the word with the word homeostasis. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just visually speaking, what's, what have I done with this word? So look at the word and look at the parentheses after it. If I say prefix and suffix, does that help? Anything you observe at all. There's no wrong answer here. Alright, so we've got the word homeostasis, and then right after it, what have I done with the, what's in the parentheses? What do you notice about homeo and same? 
Now, we're not going to write all of this stuff inside the boxes. I'm going to talk about it. What you want to do is get the headings. Is get the headings inside the boxes. Oh, what did you find? Teacher asked me to grab the video class. Oh, what is that? So uh, make yourself a little triangle under your notes if you need to. And what we're going to do is put these five levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs in our notes. Um, now this is on the border of talking about psychology versus biology. But since what's, what's been the main focus of this chapter so far? What did we talk about all last week? We talked about stimulus. And where does the stimulus get analyzed in your brain. Brain. brain? And what kind of things happen in your brain? Thoughts, right? The mind. Right, so we're talking a little bit about psychology today because we're also talking about the mind as part of chapter one. Um, so drawing your triangle, and then it's moving these title words into the sections of the triangle. All right, now Maslow was a psychologist, and his whole um, research and study was about how you basically can't get into advanced layers of living until you've figured out your survival problems first. So, for example, if you haven't had enough water, if you haven't had enough sleep, if you haven't had enough to eat, you're not going to be that focused on your learning, right? You're not going to be that focused on your spirituality. So the first basic thing all animals need to do is they need to meet their physiological needs, their, the functions of their bodies. That has to be done first. Um, for example, when you are sick, let's say you're really ill, you have a terrible stomach ache. Are you like really concerned about like getting your homework done if you're like no. like you know no. just flying out of your butt into the toilet with diarrhea? Ew. No, right? Like you're you're just focused in that moment on surviving, right? So so thinking about this idea that you have to meet those basic physiological those body needs first. Next up, after you've met your most basic physical needs, you're concerned with getting stuff, right? Getting a place to sleep. Um, you know, maybe making some money, maybe doing the right thing, about having the things, right? So having things becomes the next most important thing. And, you know, if I have no shoes, if I have no shoes and it's cold out, I'm not that worried about what other people are doing and how they feel about themselves. Yeah. about your safety before you become concerned about what your friends are doing, right? That you've got to meet your own physical needs first. Um, all right, after you feel well-fed, well-slept, after you feel safe, like you've got everything you need to be, um, you know, functioning in this world, then you can start to work on your friendships, like loving, belonging. You can start to care about others, start to care about maybe your own feelings in the moment. You're not worried about your physical being anymore. Now you're more worried about your emotional life. Um, and let's see if someone can help us out here. Um, so, Steyer, we're going to get the cup ready in a moment. Oh, actually, you, you already chose the last one, right? Let me choose. Um, who who did he call us? Oh, it's already on, right? So, yeah, whoever whoever got chosen chooses next. Um, oh, wait, I wasn't chosen. I, what, what you it was Kaylani. Oh, it was Kaylani. Right, right. That's right. I forgot. Thank you. All right, so what Kaylani's going to do is she's going to find someone to tell us how love and belonging can lead oh, yeah. to esteem. No, it better not be me. Um, um, Raven. Oh. Ah. <laughs> was coming. Raven, how can having feelings of friendship, family, love, and belonging, how can that lead to esteem? And we know what the word esteem means, right? Yes. All right. Yes. Best guess, right? Yes. Try it out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you for the next one. So Raven, how, how can being in loving how can being in loving relationships help you? <laughs> you say what? <laughs> nope. Alright, so great. So she did a great job of that, right? Now now that you satisfied your esteem and you're like, I'm a good person, right? Like people like me. Um, you can move on to self-actualization. You can start to solve problems in your life. Be creative. Um, and this is an important one, especially for adolescents. Acceptance of facts. Are there certain things in the world that we cannot change? Yes. 
What's happening right now across the Atlantic Ocean in the globe? Like, War. All right, and a lot of people are dying. Dying. dying, right? Can you, as a high school student in Boston, save every one of those people? No. no. Yes. Every <laughs> one of them. How big is your house? Oh, so, like, it's, it's a very difficult thing as a human to accept that you only have so much power. Like, maybe you can help a few, right? Maybe you could, like, adopt a couple or something. But it's not like you can take on a million people and feed them all and clothe them all and give them a safe place to stay, right? So a big part of once you feel safe is knowing what you can and can't do in life. Um, um, when, when we have our next thing up, for sure. Actually, we might be close to the All right, yeah, so we'll call you, on, we'll call you in a moment. All right, we've got four more vocab words, and we're going to cap this off. All right, so stages of childhood. So now we're going to look at stuff that's important to you. You just need the headings. Yeah, if you've got the headings, you're good. Uh, survival needs. So where are we writing that? Our physiological bottom. Which one are you missing? So let me write that in the back. Does she have one? Okay. So. I don't know these words. I don't know what they're saying. Um, you're, I'd rather you write it under the agenda. Okay. All right. The what? If like your notes, if your notes side fills up, spill over the agenda before we go to the next page. But we only got four words left. You should be able to fit them all in. All right. So, um, all organisms go through what's known as a gestation period. Yeah. Gestation. Um, so that is the carrying of young in either the uterus of a mammal or the time it takes an egg to mature. Um, so basically it's what we consider like the length of pregnancy, right? So for our particular species, um, so here's where Raven's gonna get her popsicle stick ready. Um, oh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Just pull it out. <laughs> All right, great. So Shailani's gonna tell us, um, for humans, what is the length of gestation? Nine months, right? So for humans, it takes us nine months to mature in the womb before we're like ready to come out and face the world. Um, you know, for example, has anyone ever had a cat or a dog that has got pregnant and given birth? How long was that gestation period for? How long did the, the mother carry the pups for? In her Annoying part. 
part of life. Uh, it's a period of life from puberty, right? So your body is changing, right? Hair is sprouting up in all kinds of places. You've gotten a little smellier than it used to be. Um, Right, so fluids are coming out of orifices, right? So in adolescence, your body is going through a transformation, but you're not quite completely independent yet, right? So you're still treated like a child, even though many of your behaviors are adult-like. Um, so you're just, you're getting close. Like you're, all, you know, you're almost at that point where you're fully weaned off of the dependence. The main thing about adolescence is when your body becomes reproductively able. You are now able to make more of our species. <laughs> um, all right, and of course, once adolescence is over, you are now a adult, right? And you have become uh, not changed yet. You have become mature, right? You've reached maturation. Um, so when you have reached maturation, right, your body kind of no longer changes into anything new at that point, right? Everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, and this happens for different people at different speeds. Um, Shailana, could you pull our next person? All right, so Michaela's going to tell us um, what a... Yeah. Um, for, for our species, what is the age of maturation? When does the body stop growing, changing, whatnot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, have, we have volunteer, right? Isn't it 18? Around 18, right? For most of us. For some people, it's 16. Some people stop growing at 16. Some people grow clear into their mid 20s. Um, I had my last spurt of maturation when I was 22. Um, I, grew, I grew an inch and a half that year. Right, so some people still grow up until their 20s. No, my mom grew an inch, my mom 32. How that works. My mom, she's 32 years old, and she grew an inch. Yeah, now sometimes it's a product of the cells changing. Sometimes it's a product of exercise. If you stretch a lot, you start doing yoga and taking good care of your body, you'll also lengthen your spine, you can increase your height. So did she? <laughs> <laughs> right, so typically speaking though, these are our stages of childhood. All right, now what folks are going to do is they're going to open up their books to page 31. I'm leaving this screen up here. So opening up to page 31, as long as you've got one of those books open on your table, you are in good shape. Do we need to let these All you need is a little bit of space on your agenda side here. I only, I only took that out because Wait, someone needed to it. Oh. And what do we think? How, how is this working out so far? If these were filled with like the colored pencils, the scissors, all that stuff, is this thing in the way on the table or is it like fine? All right, at the end of class, I'll, I'll do like a vote thing and we'll see how we feel about it. Um, it'll keep us from having to go back and forth. Um, all right, so page 31, please. 